I think we can start now. Um, first of all, thank you. I, I know it's it's been a long conference, a lot of very interesting talks, and um, that at that time of the Friday afternoon you still can spare that um, yeah time and mental energy to, to follow this talk. I really appreciate that. So my name is uh, Klaus Deisner. I work for SAP, and I'm a member of the serverless working group at SAP at, at CNCF, and um, we are working on the Cloud Events project, and our most recent initiative is X Registry, and this talk is mostly about this one. But I'll start with a general intro of the group and, and what we've been doing over the past years. I'll introduce a sample scenario I made up for this talk. I'll explain a bit what we understand, when we, what, what we think, what, when we uh, say discovery. Um, the core concepts of X registry, and of course, I'll, as usual, I guess I will close with a summary and a bit of an outlook of things we might look at uh, when working on X registry. So, um, Cloud Events, first of all, was started in the late 2017, when in the serverless working group was decided that this could be an interesting field to uh, standardize, to do something um, open source on the, in the field of serverless. And um, it quickly became a project on its own. So at, at KubeCon in Copenhagen, then it was announced uh, that it's uh, reached the sandbox level. And um, fast forward one and a half years later, um, the version 1.0 was uh, reached. So the core specification at that point became stable. And uh, we then met and discussed what to do uh, next. And um, those two things we decided to work on was, were discovery and uh, subscriptions, event subscriptions. But of course, just because those were the new fields, it doesn't mean that the other fields were already settled. I mean, just because it's a 1.0 work doesn't stop. Actually, I, I had the impression that for many, it just started. The SDKs needed to be built and, and extended and uh, also, a lot of people just had to, um, yeah, I would say digest even cloud events first, and it took some time before people could free up their mind and get to that point when they started to get more interested in, in discovery. Um, yeah, so SDK work I mentioned. Um, we have also some other draft specs uh, that um, emerged over the time. Um, we have been working on subscriptions as well. There is a draft specification for that. Uh, it has been stable for a while. Uh, so not really touched. Um, as a side effect of the other specifications, we also have a spec for uh, pagination, because that is a frequent problem in, if you deal with, with API specifications. And we have um, a SQL dialect that emerged as part of the subscription API that we defined really a complete little secret dialect for filtering on cloud event attributes. But, okay. Actually, I have to admit, this is the slide I already showed last year in Amsterdam. Um, still, it's not the case that nothing happened. We have been really active on X registry. And of course, yay, we, we graduated just in the beginning of this year. So <laughs> that was a long way. And um, actually, also behind the graduation, I think there's a lot of this what I call digesting cloud events, because it really need, needed to be um, incorporated in many uh, ways. So, but now let's let's go to discovery and let's look at um, a scenario you might find familiar as you are here. Um, I thought of uh, booking a conference and uh, travel to the conference as maybe one example. It's for sure the way I designed it, not uh, certainly uh, very realistic. Nevertheless, uh, as a sample, I thought it would be better than the usual Hello World or Blob Store events we, we usually have when we discuss cloud events and on some samples. So um, in this scenario, you have uh, some, some people who book a conference. Um, if, if you look at them, they might not be typical uh, KubeCon attendees with the business outfits, but nevertheless, so conference attendees, um, they register for a conference and um, here, then, you could think of certain providers that offer the management, the booking, and, and those things uh, for conferences. So that's what I mean when I talk about conference management service. Um, on the other hand, you have travel service providers that, yeah, hotels, airlines, etc., and booking platforms that uh, provide uh, access to those uh, providers. And um, 
So if a new conference uh, is planned, so someone um, orders one of those services uh, to, to uh, manage a conference, then it sends out a conference planned event and the service providers and also the booking platform get to know about it and the service providers can then decide to uh, offer discounts. Um, that's what is usually also listed when you're on that homepage when you're booking uh, KubeCon. And uh, then they can send out again events that they're offering discounts and um, when, when someone actually makes use of it, then it's a discount granted event, etc. You have changes on conferences, you can have updates or sadly enough, uh, I mean, you can also have a conference cancelled. And um, the booking platform here is just a consumer of events because it just wants to be up to date uh, about what is going on with conferences and who supports it. And yes, so cloud events for interoperability. Um, this is a cloud event, I, how I could imagine to have it uh, for this. It's, um, if you look at the top, the part I marked in yellow, uh, there are the typical, hopefully known suspects by now, uh, the event type, uh, where you see that this is a conference planned event. Maybe I can also switch on my laser pointer thingy. So the, the conference planned event, uh, the event source, I of course made up, um, but you see here that would be the um, host name maybe of the conference management service and, and in the end here I put CNCF for the organizer of that particular conference. Uh, in the subject that has some relevance for, for the next slides also, I put in the uh, something that uniquely identifies the conference. So uh, it's a combination of the conference management service here, it's just example conferences. CNCF and the acronym for this conference. And um, in the payload, just briefly, I mean, there's also uh, similar data, a lot of things you would expect, like the venue and the name of the conference. In the bottom, you see max attendees. That could be a hint for those service providers, how much discount they want to offer, how, what's the capacity they could offer. Um, so let's, uh, yeah, the conference key is again this combination of those three values. And um, let's now um, discuss what, what discovery would be in this case. So uh, discovery can be three things. First of all, you would like to know what events are there, what is available. That's ex essentially what you saw in, these, in this diagram in the beginning and about the scenario. And um, also the, the, how the cloud event attributes are set, how they are used. Once you're, um, you have found about this, it, it's uh, about the implementations and then data structures matter. So that's the schema registry. That's about the payload formats usually. And um, in the end then, you, it's also about uh, discovering specific endpoints. So where can I send my events or where, what can I, um, where can I subscribe to events? And yes, so. That's something new. Uh, since last year, we have a logo, a real logo this time. So that was also created just a few weeks ago. Um, and, uh, but again, back to our um, scenario. So now we have a new service provider in town. This little guy here opened up a new hotel, the Cloudy Inn, and he has the goal. I mean, it's a new hotel. He wants to get in business. So why not offer some discounts? And yeah, so those are again the steps. That's the steps I, I explained before. You have you want to find out about the relevant uh, event definitions. You um, need to implement consumers and producers. That again includes the schemas and set up your own endpoints, and then um, for consumption also subscribe them to events. So now to the event definitions. Um, and a definition for that event I showed in the beginning could be like, like this one here. Again, um, this definition also gets the, I, I gave it the identifier conference planned. Um, it mentions here the format cloud events. So that might suggest that there's not just cloud events and I, I'll come to that later. Um, and, but the typical things for cloud events then is in this metadata section where you then have descriptions or further constraints actually of the uh, cloud event context for that event. So for type, it's clear in that context here that this is always a fixed value. This is this conference planned type, event type. 
subject is interesting because uh, here it's, it's not set to a specific value. I mean, it's, it's clearly dynamic, uh, depends on the conference, but um, it's uh, said that this is uh, required. So the core specification of uh, the core specification of cloud events subject is just an optional attribute. But for this event definition, then it's, it's uh, said that it is required. And yeah, finally, then in the bottom here in this case, there is a link um, to the um, event to the schema definition for this payload of this event. We can also have a look. Is that the right direction? Yes. So I hope that is that is visible. Um, there is. Um, I, I prepared also really um, a full registry file uh, in the first place for this uh, talk. Uh, at some point, I will probably also upload this to the uh, as a sample to the X registry repository. I'm not sure when that will happen. Um, what we have here is those sections. Um, so this is a registry in, in, in a file. We also have, and that will also come later, an API. But first, this file structure, it's, it's good to understand what we are doing here. Um, we have the message groups, and, and here you can then find the definition, also the one I, that was shown on the slide. That one is under uh, conference management. Here you again have the uh, conference planned event. There are also the other two events, and um, you see here also that it is in groups. So uh, there's the provider group and the management group. Provider are those two discount events um, that are then supposed to be sent out by the service providers. And uh, in addition to message groups, we have here the schema groups. So there was that link to the uh, schema. In this case, is the JSON schema because that's the one I'm, I'm most familiar with. But we would also support other schema languages. We are not, um, it's not specific to JSON schema. That's also why we, we uh, have here this format field. So. Schemas can be uh, versioned, so that's also a concept of the uh, registry. And uh, sorry, in the bottom there are the endpoints, and we will come to those then uh, a bit later. So the general concept of X registry and the X it stands for extensible is that you have this, this general structure of a registry that contains groups of resources. The groups again can contain multiple types of resources, and those, again, have, can have versions. And on each level, you can define uh, additional metadata attributes. Um, there are also already some we have defined in the core specification. And now, maybe to the API. Uh, we have this API. It's, I guess for this hierarchical structure, it's quite straightforward that the REST API makes, makes sense. Uh, there are a few special things, but first, um, you can list groups, as look at a speci specific group. You can list resources and, and, again, do all those typical things you do in REST APIs. Uh, but we also have this question mark meta, and that will also be uh, play a role later on when we look at schemas. Um, I have hopefully, <laughs> uh, one experimental implementation of the API up and running and can try to show some uh, REST calls, maybe. It's, it's running locally on, on a Minikube, and it is really experimental. It's not even yet in our um, repository. It's, it's an implementation done by Doug Davis, our co-chair. Um, if you see this, Doug, later on, maybe, uh, thank you <laughs> for all the support. So um, this, what I just called, is a get on the um, group of uh, provider messages. And let's see at the result. So here you, you then get again this, what you saw already in the, in the registry JSON, in that file version I showed you before. Uh, something you might observe when looking a bit closer. Maybe I also make it a bit bigger. There are a few more attributes in here. You have now the, the epoch, which we use for uh, consistency checks if, if updates are done on the API. Um, there's this um, versions count, those count values. There are additional URLs uh, mentioned in here that are just added by the server. These are attributes that are um, 
just set by the server, it would be partially impossible and partially also very annoying to, uh, if you had to set those values when you're writing this by hand into a file. So that's, that's um, an important aspect here as well. Um, we have, of course, uh, also other um, uh, ways to access this. Let me see. So um, there are also update operations possible, of course. I'm, I'm doing, a, I can also do a put. Here in this case, the put um, updates the uh, definition of this provider messages, message group and adds a label. So labels are also a concept we have in, in the metadata. In this case, it just adds a label um, about the management service that in this kind, this uh, group uh, belongs to the example conferences. So just to have some example for the labeling. And I can hopefully run this. And it worked, yes. So um, here as well, you see now after the update, the epoch is, um, is set to two now. And um, we also should see the labels, right? And this can then also later be used to um, filter when you're um, accessing that API. So what else? Let's maybe go back to this. Ah, yeah, one more thing. Um, the registry is self-describing. So we had, that was also in the slide before, um, the very first one, we have this model slash model call. And then you really get a description of the uh, schema of the registry, you could say. It's actually some, uh, you could say our own schema dialect. Um, that was a long discussion and there were a lot of experiments with uh, JSON schema and open API. And, um, Finally, we decided to have this on our own. It's a more simplified. It's not a general purpose schema language, I would say, but uh, for our purposes, it is more simple. Um, we will also have a feature that you can do the self-description also in other schema languages. So it will be defined using this language, but you could then also retrieve it probably in JSON schema or whatever the server supports. So just to, to show you this one as well for the... Um, model endpoint. I think I have that call somewhere. It is a bit difficult to look at the screen from up here. Ah, here. So this is quite a lot. Um, what it get re gets returned here, um, a lot of attributes and especially for the message groups that's a quite a bit, or the messages, uh, it's quite a bit of definition you have in here because we have parts here for all different uh, protocols, and I will come to that also later on. But that's why, why this is actually quite a bit, this model. But back to, to messages and to Captain Cube and his hotel. So it is, of course, nice that you can define a message and um, then also have that uh, exposed, for example, over HTTP. So that's what you see on top. We separate the abstract cloud event definition from the protocol specifics in our definitions. And that's why in, in this, uh, these message groups I showed in the beginning, you didn't see anything about HTTP because those were just about cloud events. Um, in the endpoint definitions, I later on, I put then a binding where I then have, in my example, it's HTTP, but we, um, you can also have all the other cloud event bindings, of course. Um, an interesting feature here is that we also introduced uh, something we call the base message URL. So you can define an abstract message that just is a cloud event format and doesn't have a binding. And then later on, you can uh, define specific uh, messages that then refer to this abstract message and um, in addition then add the protocol specifics like the HTTP method, paths, headers, those, those things that are not really not, not covered by the cloud event uh, specification but that are up to uh, the implementation to decide on. And that brings me back to the model and, and why it was so long uh, in the example before. We have uh, something that is called if values, and um, this is a bit similar to what you may know, might know from OpenAPI. There are discriminators, and it's actually, I think, 
I was not part of this, but I think that's something uh, people tried to use before, but didn't really work out for us. Um, but yes, that's um, the if value. So um, the example I have here is the binding, and there you can then, depending on what the binding parameter holds, you can then um, have different attributes defined in those if values. And this is, again, um, in this model, let's see. So here we have already the binding for AMQP, for example. So here's the, first of all, the binding op, um, property defined. It has a name, a type, of course. And then there comes this if models, uh, if values section. And, and here you see, if I uh, collapse those sections a bit, you see that there are the bindings for the different protocols. And uh, especially AMQP has, has quite rich uh, possibilities here. You, you have the application properties, you have delivery annotations, sorry, uh, uh, a footer properties, and, and so on. And that is something that varies for each protocol, and that's why it's quite nice to have this binding and, and to have it work that way. In my example, I um, had that endpoint definition. Uh, So the endpoints, exactly. And here it's the same. Endpoints are essentially special message groups that um, carry in addition some information about an endpoint. But uh, below, they, they also have messages and are a grouping mechanism for messages as well. And um, here there are, again, those discount offered, discount granted messages. But you see also that they are pointing to a base message and that they have this, this binding and uh, just for the example, I just added uh, that in this case, uh, for this endpoint, because it is a, um, a producer endpoint, uh, here, usage producer, um, this is about, uh, so this is a post method that would be used, so you would post events to that producer endpoint and uh, use the path discounts. And yeah, finally, the schema registry. And, and this one is a bit different because uh, in this uh, schema description for X registry, we can also uh, state if a resource actually carries a document or if it just consists of metadata that is defined in X registry. And that's what we have here. So if for schema, that's exactly one example where there is a document. The message uh, definition was so lengthy that schema because everything was defined, all the metadata was defined in X registry. And, and here we just say that this contains a document. And that also has some um, effects, of course. Uh, we can uh, look at a schema group. I hope I fed that into the server before I. Yes. So I had to restart that demo a few times. <laughs> Um, so, um, what you see here is the schema group, and um, one thing I could do is, it, it says, for example, that there is one schema in there, and it's just metadata about the schema group. Um, just a sec. Uh, yeah, that's, it's actually it's all schema groups, but it's, um, in this case, there's just one schema group in the, in the schema registry. That's okay. Um, you could also say inline, then it would um, already uh, put in also the, the schema. But it is still only the metadata of the schema. If you want to really access the schema itself, you can do so by, by um, accessing it directly. That's what I have here. Then you really see, get the, the schema data. Again, if you are interested in the metadata, uh, by the way, that metadata is also there, but in this case, it is in the header. So here you see all those X registry headers. And they are, that is a very um, similar concept to what we have in cloud, in cloud events in the core specification where we can in binary encoding also transport metadata in head attributes. We use this actually here as well. Um, if you want to have that metadata and not the document, you can also add um, 
the question mark meta, where I already said that we would see this later on. So then you, you get uh, just the metadata. And that can be handy also if you want to do update operations, because then you can also do the update operations uh, with all the data in the body, which is much easier. So back to Captain Cube. Um, he has uh, found his events and uh, the subscriber endpoint for uh, subscribing to those uh, management events where the conference planned event and those events are emitted. He can subscribe his endpoint to this. And uh, there's the producer endpoint where he can send discount events to. And um, to support this, we have some experimental um, implementation of um, a generator tool that was uh, created by um, another member of the group, Clemens Fasters. He also showed parts of this last year in Amsterdam. Um, so what you can do, so of course I did that before. Uh, so you can see that there are already some generated output, uh, which is here in the, in the test um, directory. But what I do now is I call this again and put it into the uh, out directory. So it's, you might see then that this shows up there, hopefully. <laughs> and um, yes, so there's now the out directory. You can see that some Java stuff has been generated. I'm not that fluent with Java anymore these days, but still you, what you can see is there are those structures generated. This is just for the producer, so it's just about discount granted and discount offered. There's, um, are those classes generated that contain uh, data that is um, derived from the schema definition. Here, the conference key, for example. And um, on the other hand, there's also already a producer um, generated that uh, contains some methods to send out those events already. So here's the send discount offered event. And you can see here that the type is already uh, set as a constant. And um, we can do the same also for async API. So actually, there is a, um, a generator that generates from X registry async API descriptions. And now also in that output out directory, um, oops, something else should have shown up. I think it is this one. The, it's a YAML version of um, async API for those of you who are familiar with it. You see here again the server description uh, with, with the sample URL I added in the file. Uh, you see, um, what else do you see? You see that there is a channel. Uh, it's, it's, it's a webhook. It's always this um, one uh, direction where it's sent, and, and you see that there is um, those two messages already um, referenced from here, and those message definitions again correspond to those events uh, we see, saw in X registry before. And again, you already the uh, cloud event attributes uh, as part of those message definitions. In the bottom, also the uh, schemas are available. So that brings me to the summary. X registry manages uh, metadata about resources. <laughs> that sounds very generic, and it is generic. But we also defined um, domain-specific extensions for messages, endpoints, and schemas. It is well possible to define your own um, definitions. Essentially, you could also store open API or async API documents in there. You could also use it as a registry for that. Um, you can also use file-based uh, file format and just write things into a file. It's not yet stable, so that was also a challenge for me to, uh, preparing this. The spec currently still changes on a, on a weekly basis. We are still meeting every week and discuss changes that are proposed. And um, so, but nevertheless, it's, it's progressing. And I think since last year, we, we uh, got some progress and some ideas uh, that, that got much more clear. Um, one thing that needs some work is if we think of um, cases where we might replicate registries, where you have 
say, a registry in, in a private subnet that would mirror a registry that from the open internet and, and how you would do these things. You would probably not replicate this over those REST APIs I showed you before that uh, increase the epoch value and all those things that might um, require different mechanisms. So that might be one field to look at. Um, another thing is uh, we might define actually, uh, yeah, cloud events that would then uh, notify about changes to the registry so that we would use our own specification uh, for notification events. And yeah, it's, it's still a good time to join us, by the way, if you're interested. Um, we have weekly calls, uh, we have Slack channels, we have GitHub, uh, mailing lists. Uh, I perceived uh, the serverless working group uh, as a very welcoming um, community, so it's, it's really uh, very pleasant conversations and discussions you can have there. So, and with that, I would say I'm open to questions. Thanks for the talk. Uh, very interesting. I've never heard of X Registry before today. Um, when do you expect the spec to be stable? When you because you have said there are changes weekly, basically. That's always a hard question. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I, I know. I, I don't really know. It really depends on um, people who participate and um, bring in interesting use cases. Um, I will also uh, just by preparing this this talk uh, with the sample uh, scenario. Uh, that already brought me some new ideas I want to discuss with the others next week. Um, yeah, I, I can't really say, really. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, thank you for the talk. Uh, I have almost the same question, but I'll phrase it in a different way. Which <laughs> part is stable and which one are more in, uh, in movement or in shambles? So, so to know it's not a when, but what can I rather stably or safely use today, and which one is more open to movements and, and, and changes? So X registry is uh, um, completely open still. Um, yeah. The only very, really stable part is the Cloud Events core specification and, and the SDKs. Yeah. I have got it. Hi, I have a question about the X registry. So, is it standard, or there will be an actual physical implementation as well that, that we can use and, and deploy? I know you've got a sample mm -hmm. there, but yes, yeah, um, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I don't know yet. I could imagine that. Um, so, by the way, I have uh, opened them. Let me see. So, I took the implementations from these two web pages. So, one is the CLI that is currently in, in Clemens Vasta's uh, personal repository and the API implementation that is uh, currently uh, done by Doug Davis. Um, I could imagine that we move some of this over, but um, I don't know when and, and of course it depends on those two when we do this and if we do this. Hey, thanks for the talk. Uh, one of the main um, event registries we out there is eventcatalog.dev, I believe. Are you talking with them to maybe feed based on their use cases on existing uh, like experience or whatever, or in any case? Well, short answer is no, I'm not sure. I think I heard about them one or two weeks ago for the first time, but I'm not, not sure if I'm confusing it. Are those the ones who generate documentation for events, essentially? Is it that? Um, In some way, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I learned about this. Uh, I found it quite interesting, but I just recently learned that it exists, and then we have to discuss. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Okay, then... Um, Again, thank you for spending that time on that Friday afternoon with me.
have a safe trip back home and um, yeah, also um, au revoir <laughs> et bon voyage et uh, à la prochaine. Yeah.